Good afternoon, everyone. This is your brother, Chris LaSala. I am a five-star general, and I'm here with other fellow five-star generals. And we're here to correct this fake general. He's more like a private who needs to be scrubbing toilets because he's decided to preach demonic foolishness from the production Jesus Christ Superstar as biblical truth, unfortunately. It's true. Here we go. We, we're going to go through a little bit about Herod, and then we're going to go through some more scriptures. So it gives you a little insight about vines, huh? I mean about foxes. So you wonder why would they use the word fox news, huh? Like, and they're trying to say, oh, it's an acronym for something. All right, so here he's talking about Herod, you know, being called a fox. And uh, he's talking about why would they call Fox News Fox News. And he's insinuating it's because Herod was called a fox. Here we go. Uh, now, they know what they do. Trust me when I tell you, they study the Bible more than a lot of Christians do. They study the Bible. The people, it's Fox News, apparently. The Illuminati, the New World Order, the Freemasons. Okay, so here's why Fox News is called Fox News. Fox is named after what was then called 20th Century Fox, its original corporate sibling before it was acquired by the Walt Disney Company, and indirectly for producer William Fox, who founded the one film... St the one of the film studio's predecessors, Fox Film, right? So this is why Fox News is called Fox News, because that was the guy's name. We figured out the great revelation. Yes. While he's giving you bogus mysteries again to make you paranoid of the Illuminati. Here we go. Let's keep going. Now, as we get to 23, let me explain this before I explain that. Why don't I just read about the soft raiment? Soft raiment means effeminized. It means men that are like, oh. Okay, so soft raiment means soft man, apparently. Because the raiment was like fine silk and it was soft and it was fancy, right, and delicate, all of a sudden he's making... Herod into a full-blown homosexual, right? Yeah. And if right. you if you think we're kidding, and he's just calling him effeminate now, you're gonna we're gonna prove to you that the whole time he's articulating the fact that it said soft raiment means Herod is a full-blown gay guy. Okay. Look, right. okay. Chris, he's wearing soft raiment right now. Look at his shirt. It's right. the clothes we wear today is so much softer than anything they had back then, on average. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. So, he is sodomite for wearing that shirt. Again, the word in the Greek can be used to used as soft or effeminate if you're applying it to a man, but it's being applied to the clothing, right? Yeah, they're wearing so, soft rape. Right. right. So they're what, like rich people we have silk sheets, very very soft robes and things like this. It doesn't necessarily make you effeminate. It, 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 you could be effeminate and be wearing that stuff, obviously. But he's acting like this is what this verse was intended to mean when it wasn't, okay? Right. Soft raiment means effeminized. It means men that are like, oh, my hair ain't done. I can't go out today. You know what I mean? Masculine men, it's okay to look good, bro. You know what I mean? When your whole day is ruined because your gel ain't working as a man, you got a problem. No, that's true. But it's got nothing to do with this. What he's, Literally. What he's, what he's quoting. You feel me? When you're going to get a tan and, and get a man purse and looking better than your woman, you got a problem. Amen. You're, you're in soft raiment in the king's palace, and Jesus spoke about you. Jesus. A man can look good. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I know plenty of brothers that got good style, but y'all know the difference. When you overdo it, you got to watch out. That could be a feminine spirit. So now, that's why I said a reed shaking in the wind is a thinly emasculated man. You get it? Okay. All right. A reed shaken in the wind is someone that's not committed on stable. The context is, he's saying, what did you expect to see? 
a man adorned in soft raiment, a reed shaken in the wind. They're out in the desert. That's the context. They're roughing it. He, the, he, like, what he's saying is, what Jesus is saying is, did you come out here expecting to see a man dressed in fine silk that is that hasn't come out of the world, that's not fully committed, that's in and out of the world, unstable, double-minded? That's what he meant. He didn't mean, would you come out here to see a blazing homo? That's not what he meant. That's not the context. Uh, Wallington Carlson III. I'm sorry, wrong again. You have no idea what you're talking about. You probably learned this from Gary Price or some other Illuminati-obsessed human being. Somebody, yeah, like he, well, we know where he got it from. He got it from Jesus Christ Superstar, right? That's where That's everyone's it. getting the gay Herod Antipas doctrine from, right? Because it's not in the Bible. There's no evidence he was gay. He was attracted to woman. He was attracted to the woman who danced for him, Herodias's daughter. And he was obviously attracted to his brother's wife also. Very much so. So gay guys aren't just going to go around lusting over different women all day long, right? Nor really would uh, most effeminate guys be doing that, even though they might, right? We don't know. But there's no biblical evidence he was effeminate. You can't get up there and start barking on biblical stuff from Jesus Christ Superstar as if it's biblical truth. Yeah. Right. And this guy's almost trying to make it sound like Jesus was saying every king or in anyone that's in a kingdom is a sodomite. Right. Like, was Solomon a sodomite? No. Right. Any yeah. king with fine clothing, he's making the assumption that he's been infected with effeminate nature, right? And we know it's speaking about an uncommitted person, a more double-minded person, instead of saying that they're homosexual, because when he goes on to describe John the Baptist and the type of person who is getting into the kingdom of God, he says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So people without zeal, people without the true fire and the true calling that God's calling them to have to really you know, take the kingdom and be fit for the kingdom. That's what's being described here. The, the whole surrounding context just absolutely yeah. obliterates everything that Wally's speaking about here. It doesn't yeah. go on to speak about homosexuals. Right. Or He's contrasting men that are roughing it in the wilderness, hardcore people that are committed from wealthy people entangled in all the affairs of the world, right? Yeah in king's palaces. That's it. Nothing more. If you want to believe something more, you better not teach it, because it's nowhere in the Bible. It's mm -hmm. only in demonic shows that we're going to show you. Emasculated man, you get it? It's like a, a little emasculated man getting blown around. So what you're seeing here is a clip from Jesus Christ Superstar. See this guy shaking her? This is where Wally got it from. See him acting like this? That's where he got it from, people. That's the sources, people. And if he didn't get it from there, it's even more pathetic. That means some demon cooked it up in his own mind. And then that same <laughs> demon went over to the guy who made that film and cooked it up in their mind, too. Right. By the way, that's what he meant. A men in soft rain. Hairless palace where the sodomites were. Come on, guys. Her Herod's palace, where the sodomites were. Didn't you? Don't you remember reading that in all, all, all four gospels? Come on. Which Bible verse can I go to to find out yeah. that there's some LGBTQ parade in his palace? Jesus Christ Superstar, <laughs> chapter ten. That's where I got it from. Hey, it's a sodomite madhouse in there. I'm sure nobody would have even like thought twice about like calling him out for that. Because obviously John the Baptist wouldn't be saying, I rebuke you, Herod, for having a fag party in your house. And he'd be sitting there complaining, rebuking him for having his brother's wife, right? I think that would have been yeah. the elephant in the room. Yeah, he just skipped over the fag party and rebuked him for having his brother's wife. That's not as important, right? Yeah. A guy is humping a goat in there, but no, that's not important. There's a, it's a big palace where sodomites dwell. That's not important. But hey. Stop it with your brother's wife, Herod. Stop yeah, that's it. Really, that's the issue. <laughs> Not only that, but they were embarrassed of that to the point where 
Herodias wanted to uh, move to have him killed, right? Because she didn't like him talking about that. So imagine if they were ashamed of that. Imagine a bunch of homos just prancing around freely out in the open in there. Maybe Wally's got like the secret pass to the bottom floor of, of Herod's palace back then. Maybe he's got the, the intel from his Illuminati research sources, what they were doing. Watch this. Herod's palace where the sodomites were. Watch this. All right, so here we could see Herod's attracted to woman. He was seduced over here. Herodias had her daughter dance for him. It pleased him. It, it didn't, like, repulse him because he was, like, this blazing homosexual that uh, Wally's trying to insinuate over here. We're going to get into that soon. Here we go. And he's, all right. You said verse 22? Verse 31 going down. It says, In the same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying to him, Get thee out, depart hence, for Herod will kill you. Oh, sure, you going to threaten God with some punked out man? <laughs> All right, so he's calling Herod a punked out man. We're going to prove that here in a second, that that means uh, that Herod was a homo, full-blown homo that takes it in the you-know-what. This is what he's trying to insinuate, people. <laughs> Just barking it out like it's biblical truth with no support whatsoever. But what I find interesting is, let's listen again. Oh, sure, you're going to threaten God with some punked out man. Okay, so all of a sudden, this delicate, soft little lady fairy is going around threatening everybody. So yeah, now he's dead. not like this timid little sissy. Now he's a killer, right? Not to say homosexuals can't be killers. We know they can, but they'd be more like the brute beast masculine version of homosexuals, right? Yeah. They wouldn't be like the female effeminate version of a homosexual. Go like, One more time. Take a look. To him, get thee out, depart hence, for Herod will kill you. There you go. Does that sound like the feminine side of a gay uh, couple going around <laughs> killing people? That would be the masculine brute beast side. No one would call that side effeminate. Nobody. That would be the side that would be known as the butch side. Um, you know, like when, when there were lesbians in our high school, we'd call the one the butch. She was the man. The other one was the, 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 the wife, you know, the effeminate. Right. Oh, sure, you gonna threaten God with some fucked out man? What you did, grant my God with a man. <laughs> oh, sure, you gonna... So here's the first proof he's saying uh, that Herod was a homosexual straight up. To be raped homosexually. I'll move this for a second. It says punked out. Punked out. To be raped homosexually especially in prisons or whatever. Threaten God with some punked out man, some punked out man. What you did, grant my God with a man. <laughs> God sneezed and he'd be gone out the universe, right? Now watch this. Jesus said not a word. And the chief priests and scribes stood vehemently and accused them. And Herod with his men of war set him up at night and mocked him and arrayed him in gorgeous robes. See, try to put that little queer on Trying to put that little soft raiment on Jesus. Trying to put that little queer on. Trying to put that little queer on. Trying to put that little queer on. Okay, so not only is he accusing Herod of being a straight homosexual, but now it's all culminating right here. He he's not only a full blown homosexual and an effeminate one, a ladylike one, but he's now dressing Jesus Christ up in in that same kind of clothing, right? Where is he getting this from? Where? Does he just make this up in his Wally brain? Yes. Just because the clothing is soft doesn't mean the man is gay. Just because right. it's rich man's clothing doesn't mean the man is gay. I put that little soft raiment on Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, I am overjoyed to meet you face to face. So this is where this is where this comes from, guys. Just want you to know cuz historically there's no evidence of this. 
You've been getting quite a name all around the place. Healing cripples, raising from the dead. Now I understand. Mm. Huh? Mm. <laughs> At least that's what you've said. The hit you've made around here. You are all we talk about. You are the wonder of the year. Oh, what a pity if it's all a lie. Still, I'm sure that you can rock the cynics if you try. All right, we we uh, we kept out all the filthier stuff for you guys. Don't go look it up. Don't go look it up. But this is Wally's view of Herod's temple. You're looking at it. Like, like literally, he's articulating this. <laughs> Does the Bible teach this? <laughs> this guy's like, this guy calls himself the general. This yeah. guy's like some great master apostle. This is what he's teaching his ignorant followers. Anyone got a problem with this? Is everyone okay with this? I don't get it. Anyone else have anything to say about this? Not really, except for the oh. fact that Wally makes up a lot of stuff, and hopefully you guys are starting to see that. And Lord willing, as time goes on, you will continue to see that. It's really not hard to prove. He does it all the time. Amen. All right, guys. Have a blessed night. Hope you enjoyed the show. Wally, repent. You're off the rails, friend. Well, you're not a general. No, you're not. You're the guy cleaning the, the toilets with a toothbrush. That's <laughs> what you are. Have a nice day, everyone. Be blessed in Jesus Christ's name. God bless. If you're not a partner, why? Why are you not supporting the movement of God? Why are you not in this fight? Why are you not supporting us? Why do you love watching the videos, but you don't give it a thumbs up, you don't subscribe, you don't tell people about these videos, and you don't pray for us, and you don't support us? You repent. You will be held accountable for doing nothing for the kingdom of heaven.